Back in the 1990s, Mazda started a war. A war that us enthusiasts benefited from with the launch of a fun two-door sports car that today is known as the car that is always the answer. But the Miata's overnight success rubbed Honda the wrong way. They wanted their piece of the pie too. Enter Honda's rebuttal, a sporty Targa that Honda carefully built to dethrone Mazda's blockbuster hit. That ultimately, with one small overlooked issue, came up just short. This is the incredible story of one of the weirdest, most misunderstood Hondas ever how one mistake caused the Del Sol to suffer a premature death. This is the story of Honda's Del Sol. Jump into the driver's seat and let's race back to the late 80s. Honda has a hit with their CRX, a beloved compact sports car. But times were changing. Sales of the CRX had peaked in 1986 at 66,629 units. But by 1990, sales had fallen off a cliff. Honda knew they needed to mix things up. And that's exactly when Mazda blindsided the world with the Miata in 1990. In an instant, small affordable sports cars were back in a big way. The Miata gave Honda a clear benchmark of what they needed to build to replace their dying CRX. So they threw their top engineers, some that had just finished building the NSX, on a secret project. To not just compete with the Miata, but absolutely destroy it. Their mission was to create a car to replace the CRX that would capture the hearts of driving enthusiasts while offering practicality for everyday use. After years of intense market research, Honda would build the Del Sol on three core values, innovation, fun, and practicality. The target top had only really been seen on high-end cars like Porsche's 911 and dedicated sports cars like the Nissan Z. So implementing that technology in a more affordable package was a game changer. Couple a removable top with a lightweight body and responsive chassis, an engine with VTEC and a manual gearbox, this little car was poised to rewrite the definition of fun. And with a relatively spacious and comfortable cabin, it was both practical enough to daily drive and set lap records at your local autocross. Honda had penned a winner, or at least it seemed that way. The Mazda Miata was a huge success right from the beginning in 1990 and was quickly becoming one of the most beloved sports cars of all time, due in part to its classic timeless design that harkens back to the small British roadsters of the 1960s. But it wasn't just the Miata's looks that won over enthusiasts. The car's handling and balance were superb, and it was a blast to drive on virtually any road. The Miata's 1.6 liter engine was peppy enough to provide a fun driving experience without being overpowering. And having to only move 2,200 pounds, its near-perfect 50-50 weight distribution and rear-wheel drive made it truly shine. It created a connection between driver and machine that had never been experienced at such an affordable price point. A momentum car. A car that rewarded you for driving smoothly and wouldn't let you hide lackluster skill behind huge horsepower to turn a quick lap. It took Honda two years to build the competitor, cheekily named Del Sol, to reference the removable hardtop which Honda believed would attract more buyers, since the Targa Top Coupe felt more expensive compared to the Soft Top Miata. Plus it had bodywork shaped in a very distinctive way, hinting that it might have had a more exotic mid-engine layout, although you'll find it's in line four under the hood and the front, driving the front wheels. There were three flavors. The base model came with a 1.5 liter inline four, while the more powerful SI and VTEC trims featured the 1.6 and 1.6 liter VTEC engines. The most powerful Del Sol VTEC engine produced around 160 horsepower, which was way more than the 116 horsepower out of the 1990 Miata's 1.6 liter inline four. Thus, the Honda offered better straight line acceleration, while the Mazda made up for it around the apex. And because it was a CRX Del Sol, Honda kept it front wheel drive with entry level Civic underpinnings, which unfortunately led to more forward weight distribution that promotes underwhelming understeer when pushed too hard. Both cars were focused on the driver's experience, but how they accomplished it was quite different. And that difference was its ultimate demise. The early 90s were marked by a resurgence of interest in sports cars, as evidenced by the success of the Mazda Miata. But you also had cars like the Toyota MR2 and the Nissan 240SX, and while Honda was leading the pack of exhilarating enthusiast Japanese offerings with the NSX, they needed a fun car at a lower price tag. The Del Sol was built to square off directly with the Miata. 
It was Honda's attempt to capture the enthusiasm of the era, while also appealing to buyers seeking fuel efficiency and practicality. And that was its Achilles heel. Despite Honda's best efforts, the Del Sol struggled to find its footing in the marketplace. It faced criticism for its front-wheel drive layout, which couldn't match the Miata's rear-drive dynamics. And its Targa top was a heavier and less convenient way to go open-top motoring than the design of the Mazda. But the real dagger was that Honda did build a Miata killer with this car. The SIR. This is no ordinary Del Sol. Between its fenders, it was hiding a secret that made it truly exceptional. Under the hood lived the legendary B16A, a 1.6 liter dual overhead cam VTEC power plant that breathed fire into the car's soul. With a high revving spirit and 168 brake horsepower on tap, the SIR was a monster when compared to its pedestrian siblings. And it handled as good as it looked, with stiffer springs and dampers, thicker front sway bars, and a limited slip diff that helped give it that playful demeanor tune with its Mazda competitor. There was only one problem. Emissions. Yes, the Miata Killer couldn't pass the strict emissions regulations in the US, so it was never sold in the land of the free. Which ironically, the EM1 Civic SI that came years later had a lightly modified B16A2 engine, drawing the conclusion that Honda learned from their mistakes and gave us one of the most beloved performance-oriented compact vehicles of all time. If the SIR would have been sold in the US, the Miata might not have always been the answer. But the last Del Souls rolled off the line in the late 90s, and they've garnered a cult following as a fun and unique sports car that's really in a league all its own. The haunted Del Sol may not have been able to dethrone the Mazda Miata as the ultimate affordable sports car, but it did offer a unique blend of style, innovation, and practicality that captured the spirit of the early 90s. In the end, the Del Sol tried to take on a sports car legend and met its match. Honda wasn't able to fool anybody with the fact that the Del Sol was little more than a Civic with the roof hacked off, not a thoroughbred fun-loving roadster. Its Targa top added weight and reduced chassis rigidity, making the car overall less dynamic than the CRX it was built to replace. And for all the pros of a front-wheel drive configuration, it's got its share of cons too. Ultimately, they're cool, quirky little cars that absolutely embody the spirit of the 90s. And seeing as they're really just Civics, tunability is through the roof. So while it failed to take down the Miata, it set the stage for one of the greatest follow-up acts of all time, the S2000. There we have it folks on the story of the car of the sun. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and maybe go check out the story of the NSX right over here, or the story of Honda in general right over here. Otherwise, my name's Trav, this is Ideal, and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching.